All right, thank you everyone uh, who's joined us here today and maybe watching the recording on YouTube afterward. We're here today to do a virtual overview of the dashboard that's been published by our Tompkins County Office of uh, Probation and Community Justice. Uh, this dashboard was published earlier in October as a transparency effort from the office and the um, individuals responsible for the work from the probation department are going to walk through how to use the tool um, and answer questions from any attendees at today's webinar as well. Any questions that people have, I'd encourage you to put it through the Q&A function um, on the bottom of the screen and we can get to them one by one. If you wanna verbally ask your question, you can raise your hand and we can sort of answer that, but maybe we'll give a couple of minutes for the brief overview first. Um, and I can facilitate the questions as they come in as well. Uh, brief introduction, I'm Dominic Recchio. I serve as communications director for Tompkins County. And now I'll turn it over to Dan and Chris if you both wanna introduce yourself and then lead right into the walkthrough. Oh, great, thank you, Dominic. My name is Chris Driscoll. I'm the probation systems analyst. And my name is Dan Cornell. I'm the probation director. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, we're really excited to have this available for, for public viewing and as part of the reimagining re public safety process. Uh, excited to have more transparency and have the information out there. So thank you for joining us today. All righty, I'll jump right into it and just kind of walk us through um, how to access the Transparency Hub and hopefully answer any questions that come up. So if you start, the best way to access the Hub is to go to the Tompkins County home, Probation homepage, um, which is tompkinscountynewyork.gov backslash probation. This is our department homepage. There's lots of good information in here. Um, if there's anything on the Transparency Hub that you might have more questions about or you see a service and want more information, uh, this is an excellent resource which can provide you more information on the services and some of the programs that we offer. With that being said, uh, to access the data dashboard, this tab right here on the left, Transparency Hub, if you just click on that. That will bring us to our data dashboard cover page. Uh, the dashboard cover page offers just some general information um, about the importance of transparency, how we plan to try and use this information moving forward to assess what we're doing, uh, identify areas that we can improve upon, um, and just offer the best services possible moving forward. From this page, we have access to adult data and juvenile data. All you have to do, we'll take a look at the adult data first. So you just click on this picture. And that will load right into our adult data dashboard. All of the pages in the dashboard are set up pretty similarly. Um, across the top here, you have navigation buttons. Um, so each of these buttons is a different page within uh, the adult data dashboard. Uh, over here to the right, you'll have a clear all filters button. Um, so if you're ever clicking around and you get too many filters activated, you can always click this and it brings you back to the original setup of the page. Each page is going to have a brief overview of information about the data being presented or the programs uh, that are discussed on that slide. A um, Couple of things regarding the data that you'll see on all these slides. All of the data is interactive. And what I mean by that is if you click on any of these data sets, um, it affects all of the other um, data that's displayed on the screen. So for instance, this page is displaying all of our adult supervision cases that are currently open. Um, and this is all the data associated with the 458 cases or individuals that we're currently working with. 
if you wanted to look at information just on uh, open felony cases, you could click on felony. That gives you the number of cases that are felony cases, and it adjusts all these other boxes um, based on only the cases that are felony cases. Right. And you can dive deeper as well. Like if you just want to look at felony assaults, you can, now you've selected felony, you can click on assault in the upper right. And that will let you know how many people were supervising for a felony assault right now, what their uh, demographic information is, age, age group, ethnic origin, male, female. Uh, racial information and employment status for the individuals who are cu currently under supervision for a felony assault. So you can really drill down quite a bit um, and find specific information on specific offense types. Nowhere in here will you ever be able to tell um, any information about any of the individuals. Uh, there's no names. There's no, no way to identify any of the people that we're supervising. Uh, it's just general data and data sets and numbers just to ease anyone's concern that their personal information might be somehow uh, able to be drawn out of this information. All of the data displayed in our dashboard um, lags about one to two days behind um, actual. So this is fairly up to, about as up to date as you can get. Um, it does lag the actual by about one to two days, and that's going to be for all the data that's displayed in here. Um, this presents a lot of different options. Um, if you want to look, you can look by age group. Um, you can look male, female. Uh, any of these different uh, data sets are going to let you choose any of the categories in there. Um, and narrow the data down on that page. I think that covers our adult supervision page. Uh, so we will click over to our next data set, which is our enhanced sentencing and supervision options. Again, uh, similar setup. Um, this page displays all of our uh, programs and services offered through our enhanced supervision and sentencing options. Um, this displays how many individuals are currently open with, within each of those programs, and then the demographic information associated with those individuals. And just for clarification, uh, the enhanced supervision and sentencing options is uh, our our internal way of saying alternatives to incarceration. So each of those um, programs in the middle, the computer monitoring drug court participants, those can also be referred to as alternatives to incarceration programs. We refer to them internally as enhanced supervision and sentencing options programs because uh, the alternatives to incarceration verbiage uh, lends itself to the sort of an insinuation that all people are facing incarceration, which is a little bit misleading uh, given the current circumstances. So we're looking at enhanced supervision and sensing options and ATIs as basically the same thing. They could be used interchangeably. On this data set, we do have a program selection up here. So if you would like to narrow the data down to a specific program, you have that option. Um, you can simply select one of the programs, shows you the number of individuals open, and then it resets the demographic information to only show demographic information regarding that specific service or program. And at any time, if you want to go back to your original starting point, you just click on clear all filters, brings you back to the starting point. Do we have any questions yet, Dom? I haven't seen any yet, but if anyone does have any, feel free to put them into the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen or, or raise your hand if you'd like, and I'll, yeah, I'll keep my eye out for anything that comes through, but nothing yet. Thank you. 
Next tab up is pre-sentence investigations. This displays the number of pre-sentence investigations completed up to this point, this date of this year. Um, this is the first slide uh, that we're able to go back and look at the last five years worth of data. Um, so you can simply select on the tabs up here to review the last five years worth of data on completed pre-sentence investigations. So for this year, there's been 260 completed. Uh, then we have the corresponding demographic information um, along with what our probation officers were recommending on that pre-sentence investigation. And you can, like if you double click on probation, so this would tell you how many, uh, so 96 of those investigations, we recommended probation supervision. And again, it changes all the demographic information uh, as well for probation cases, if you click on jail below, we've recommended incarceration 50 times out of those 260 investigations. Uh, that gives you the percentages and uh, some great information in you know in that uh, tab. Once you kind of get the hang of each of these slides, they kind of follow the same format. So I won't spend a ton of time going through, through them. Um, our next slide up is violations of probation. Again, this is violations that have been filed this year. Um, the demographic information that's associated uh, so you can break it down by race, gender, ethnic origin, or age. Uh, and then we have what our probation officers are recommending as the outcome on those violations. And then what is actually happen happening uh, through the courts after that violation is heard. Same as the other slide, you can look back at the last five years worth of data. And just like all the other slides, everything's interactive on here. So you can break it down and look at any of the categories um, and see how they impact the different totals. Our next slide up is uh, probation contacts. This lists out all of our contacts uh, with individuals that are on supervision. Uh, the number of contacts typically depends on an individual's need and their supervision level. Um, this will break it down by each month, number of home contacts and number of office contacts. Um, this box here lists out all the different types of officer contacts and you can scroll through and see all the different types. You can break it down by, if I can click on there, you can break it down by month and see exactly how the contacts broke out for that month. You can clear that and look at each year see contacts each year. I think that about covers everything regarding our contacts. Our last slide for adult supervision is adult outcomes. This slide is going to highlight how all of our adult supervision, adult supervision cases closed in that particular year. Um, so it's gonna identify the number of successful, unsuccessful. Then we have our demographic information, the offense level, whether it was misdemeanor or felony, and finally, how the cases were closed. 
Um, same as all the other slides, you can review um, the last five years of data and you can break it down if you wanted to see um, the demographics for anyone that was early discharged. You just click on it and it adjusts all the information accordingly. Lots of good information in here. Um, lots of ways to drill down the information and uh, get at different data, different statistics. Um, I think this will provide us uh, a lot of information as we move forward. And I said, I, it's, it's a goal of our department to utilize this information as we kind of assess programs uh, and set goals moving forward. It's also really helpful for looking at trends um, and identifying, uh, trying to identify reasons why things are going better or things are, are taking a negative turn and so that we can uh, be, try to be proactive and, and make necessary changes to get things going in a better direction. Um, so happy to answer any questions that people have. I don't see any in the chat I right see, now. I've got one for us. So you mentioned something being unsuccessful, that 43% on this page. Does that mean that recidivism occurred? It does not necessarily mean that recidivism occurred. It can, it can mean that <clears throat> what it will mean is that the person was not complying with their orders and conditions of probation. That could be a rearrest or it could be a series of technical violations that did not involve a rearrest. Um, so a refusal to go to treatment, a refusal to um, basically when we're when we're talking violations in this county, we have had a standard for a long time that we're not going to file violations or probation seeking to revoke someone's probation unless they their behavior is presenting an imminent danger to themselves or an imminent danger to the community. So. We're very particular about when we file violations asking for revocation of probation. This number here has jumped out at me. So right now, we're this year, we're looking at a 57% of the people on probation successfully completing and 43% not, which is extremely high. And if, could I steal the mouse for a second? I just wanna look back and show people. So if you look at 2023, our successful completion rate was almost 70%. So we're way down from that in 2024. If you look at 2022, it was three quarters of the people were successfully completing probation. If you look at 2021, again, three quarters, 2020, 80%. I mean, we were in COVID then, so it was, things were a bit, that's probably a slightly, inflated by what was going on with COVID. But if you go back to through the years, 74%, 76, 69, we start trending downward in 2023. And we're on a pretty sig significant downward trend right now, which is disturbing because of course we want the people who are put on probation to end probation better off than they were when they started. And right now we need to delve into this information to, to see what some of the causal factors are, what some of the implications are that are leading to the to these out negative outcomes. Um, that's something that this dashboard is, is glaring to me. And there's a lot of analysis that needs to be done to look further into that. Okay. Thanks. That was a good question. So any other questions that are along those lines, you know, for the folks who are here today, don't hesitate to ask. Helps to dive in and, and understand everything that we're looking at. Sorry. All right. Thank you. 
that covers all the information in the on the adult side of the dashboard. Um, if other questions come up, feel free to chime in or post those in the chat. Um, and as those are coming in, we'll take a look at the juvenile side of the dashboard. For the juvenile, we just click on the juvenile box back on the cover page. That should load us into our juvenile data dashboard. One caveat for this is a very, very small sample size. If you look in the open juvenile supervision cases, uh, the green upper green line reflects three individuals and the lower green line affects two. Where in the adult supervision, we're looking at 400 and some people. In this instance, we're looking at five. So it's a significant, significantly smaller sample size. Yeah, and you will see that when we get to our family outcomes. Um, you know, one or two uh, cases can have a pretty dramatic effect on some of the percentages. Um, so similar to the adult supervision, our juvenile supervision is, our slides are set up pretty similarly. We have navigation across the top. Um, on some of the slides, we'll have years uh, so that you can look back on the last five years of data, just like the adult supervision. We have our clear all filters button and then a brief description of the data that's being displayed below or the programs that it's referencing. For our first slide, uh, this is demographic information regarding our juvenile del delinquent and person in need of supervision cases. Um, as Dan mentioned, Pretty small numbers right now. Um, we have three juvenile delinquent cases open and two person in need of supervision cases open. So we have, just to clarify, we have a lot more juveniles under our supervision, but these are the ones that have court involvement. So we have a lot of JD diversion cases and PINs diversion cases that are not collected in here. These are the court, the court ordered JD and PINs cases, which are the, um, the minority of our family court work right now. Excellent point, thank you. Uh, just as in the adult, if you do only wanted to see the juvenile delinquent demographics, you just click on that, it adjusts all the slides accordingly. We so, will- oh, Just to clarify, ahead. so- Click on our JD, divert our JD supervision cases. There's three of them, 100% of them are male, 100% are white, and 100% are non-Hispanic. And on the far right, you know, a third of them are seven, one 17, one 16, one is 14. We'll jump into our family outcomes. All of the setup, as you see, is the same. Um, we have our successful, unsuccessful rates, then our demographic information, our case type, and then how the cases were closed. Um, as we kind of mentioned, uh, I think this data is referencing six, four, 11 individuals. Um, so, I mean, one or two individuals can have a pretty dramatic effect on these percentages here. So if we have three open cases, this is reflective of 11. So that's eight cases that have closed during 2024, plus the three that are, uh, or is it all 11 that are closed so far this year? This is showing 11 cases closed this year. Okay, fine. And same as all the others, you can click on, if you just want to see juvenile delinquent cases, look at those. I got one in my office. the version. You can break it down by race. Age, gender. Yeah, age, gender, ethnicity. 
however you'd like to, to break it down and view the data. And then look at the outcomes for any of those particulars that you, that you have selected. I have, a qu I have a question for you on that that um, may help people understand. So the demographic information, how is that collected? And is that different for the adults versus the juveniles? So is it a form that they're filling out? Is it coming from another system? Um, where does that input come in for your department? I mean, we're meeting with the individuals. We're asking them uh, how they identify uh, collecting demographic information from the individual, and then that gets collected and put into our caseload manage our caseload record management system as Great. it's provided to us by the uh, by the individual. Great. So they are they are self reporting that that is what they identify as in that process. That's correct. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. And all of the data within this dashboard pulls directly from our data management system. Um, so that's where this information is being pulled from. I mean, currently everything's listed in the binary male, female. I don't know. There may be, there may come a point where um, other gender identities need to be included in this, but we're not, um, currently supervising anyone who's identifying as self-reporting as, as a different gender in the family court unit or different gender identity. Our next tab is juvenile delinquents. And this will list any juvenile delinquents or cases that have been removed from youth park. Um, and that has to do with raise the age. Um, raise the age change and it provides, uh, if you just hover over here, it'll provide a little information as to what removed from youth park means. So 16 and 17 year olds charged with felonies are considered adolescent offenders. Their cases start out in youth part of county court AOs whose cases are removed from youth part and county court to family court will then be considered juvenile delinqu delinquents. And that's all a result of uh, changes from uh, raise the age reform that started back in January of 2020. Yep. As with the other slides, we have our um, filters up here on the top right. Information regarding the number of individuals, then our demographics, and how the juvenile delinquent cases were closed. So these are number of cases that were closed in 2024. You can go back and look at number of cases closed in previous years and see exactly how they were closed. Uh, our next slide has to do with person in need of supervision. On this slide, uh, it identifies the number of cases, um, number of pins diversion cases closed so far this year. Um, we have the demographic information, who made the referral. Um, pins diversion referrals can only come from specific uh, individuals. And this outlines parent, guardian, school, or police. So you can see who made the referral. Uh, it also identifies the complaint type. So you get an idea of what the referral source's concern was that led to the referral. And then it talks about how the PINS diversion cases were closed. Again, you can click on any of the information, break it down by just school referrals, look at just parent guardian referrals. Uh, if you wanted to see only unsuccessful in cases that went to court, you could click on that, see the number, demographics associated, what type of complaint it was.
And at any point, like I said, if you're not sure what box you clicked on or how to, how to get back to where you started, you just come up here and click on clear all filters. It brings you right back to the starting point. Our final slide is family court investigations. This identifies the number of investigations that have been completed so far this year, demographic information. And then it identifies what type of investigation it was and what our probation officer's recommendation was. You will notice there is one blank spot on here. Um, as I shared, uh, this pulls directly from our data management system. Um, and this is one thing that we also use to identify errors in our data management system. So what this means is that there was one individual that nothing was entered for recommendation. Um, so I actually noticed this this morning. I went back and made that change. Uh, and once this updates within that one to two days, uh, this will go into the adoption category because it was an actually actually a, an adoption recommendation. Any other questions that have come through, Dom? Nothing else has come through. And I think you've been really comprehensive with each of the different pages that people can view. I'll give folks another minute if there's any other questions, but Otherwise, I think it's been very comprehensive. Thank you. And if people do have have questions and they they want to reach out to us, we you know once they've had a chance to digest and explore a little bit more on the on the dashboard, um, be happy to to take questions, try to answer people's questions and concerns. Um, you know, the department phone number is listed on the website. People can feel free to to call and ask to speak with me, ask to speak with a family court supervisor or any of any of the uh, individuals who are in supervisory roles here, and we will try to uh, help you navigate and and answer any questions that you have. Excellent, and I'll include that information in the description for the YouTube video as well with a link to your web page and to the dashboards, of course. I appreciate that. And I do want to say um, this would not have happened without Chris putting hundreds and hundreds of hours into th the development of this program. I owe him a huge debt of gratitude. Uh, this was one of the major goals of this department for 2024, and he took it on and, and made it happen. And I think it's a phenomenal resource. And we're we're really proud to be able to have this level of transparency with the community so that we can um, you know, look at things that we're not doing well and make correct take corrective action and look at the things that we may be doing well and you know continue to do those things in strength and those approaches that are working because ultimately the goal of this department is to help people leave here better off than they they were when they came. So happy to take any, any feedback and look forward to further conversations with the community about the information that's contained here. Great, well, thanks. I don't think I see any other questions. We'll go ahead and wrap up with that, unless you have anything additional you'd like to add. No, we just uh, look forward to exploring and learning from, from this resource. Great. Well, thank you. Um, we'll make sure this recording is available on YouTube and I appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you.